Did you download Grammarly? Come on, man. Everyone's using it. If you want to ace this paper, then don't press submit. Grammarly helps you clean up your messy, confusing sentences to get your point across clearly. See how much more clear and confident you sound now? Thank you, future Brent. No problem, Brent. And don't forget about spelling and grammar mistakes. Grammarly offers more advanced spelling and grammar suggestions that you'd otherwise miss. Just click the highlighted area and Grammarly will offer you the fix just like that. So, how are things with Sarai? Eh, she married Chad. What? Guys, who's gonna fix the hole in my Can wall? Can we just chill for a second, please? I, uh, did somebody say chill? Sorry I'm late. <laughs> yes, dude! I mean, uh, looks like we got to the CEO position. Did you know that Grammarly checks against billions of sites and catches any accidental plagiarism? Looks like an A-plus to me. <laughs> she said we'd be together forever! <laughs> Thank you, guys, for showing me the power of Grammarly. So, does anything cool happen in the future? Like, I don't know. Guys, my wall! Oh, you're still here? Well, click the blue button to use Grammarly.
a l finally it freaking works. <laughs> Well, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, hello everyone. How's everyone's day? How's everyone's day gone? I hope you guys are having a lovely Sunday. I am literally listening to the song that my dad wrote for me. I was actually surprised that this song actually played for the first time here on the stream, and it is still going. You keep on glitching. Yes, you are. Okay, I'm gonna edit here. Oh, oh I didn't know I can do that. Dang. Okay. So I'm gonna start right here, though. You're supposed to stop. <laughs> okay, remove. Okay. So, we are once again going after the lover of me. Lover me game. We're now working on Sonic's chapters, and based on what you guys are doing, what I mean to do, we are doing the um neutral ending first. This is gonna be crazy. Well, before we can get on with that, let's share a little bit of some new news that's coming up. So. The Phantom of Chaos is now looking for ed video editors. Mostly because me and Riku, we're, we're the owners now of the Phantom of Chaos. We, well, we try doing make editing the comics on our own, but it takes, but due to our IRL stuff that you have to focus on, including focusing on the content on our channels, we've been like slowing down the Phantom of Chaos. So, we are looking for video editors. Let me just post it here in the chat here. I wish that I can, let's see, can I pin this? No, I don't want to put you on timeout. There you go. Uh, let's see if I can do that from my phone. Um, so there are, so I suggest you guys um apply for all four roles on there. So that way we can see, because that way we can be able to see on what you, um, so y'all, so you stay like how you just like one list and just choose from that like one list. Baby shark do 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 Riku Wolfpack is now looking for um mod mods for his um content on Twitter. So if you guys want to go become a mod, go check him out on Twitter. The applications there. Be I'll also be particip not participating in applications, but I'll be reviewing over them as well. No, since me and Hazard, we're both mods already. We, and I kind of kind of figured out like I kind of know my stuff a little bit, even though I'm mostly a, a mod. Also, once again with the old news, I'm trying to reach the 500 subscribers on YouTube. But if you guys haven't, if I reach the 500 subs, I'll be revamping my entire social media platforms. Which means you probably won't guys be able to see my face anymore. Oh wait, there's also a little bit of new news. Actually, I forgot, I forgot to mention. New news. I have changed my um goal on Kofi. I am now currently trying to save it for a car so that I can, you know, transport transport myself wherever wherever I need to. Let me post the link in here too. So if you guys want to help me out with that, go check out my Kofi. Also, 
If you guys donate any specific amount of money to me on my Kofi, I will spin a wheel and that wheel will tell me what sour candy I have to eat, which means you guys will have to see my ugly face. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, thank you who's watching the chat. Hello. Thank you for joining. How are you doing? Also, to the stream fair piece, if you guys go to my if you guys are not in my Discord server, I have Okay, to the stream fair piece, if you guys go check out my Discord server, go to the stream yard links. The invite to join the sir join the stream is in the, in that chat. So, uh, else? Oh yeah. Also, help me reach to fifty followers on Twitch, so I can go do my, so I can reach to become a Twitch affiliate. Thank you. Now on to the game. As soon as I so, upstairs. So let's start with the game here. So we're now working on Sonic story right here. Luckily, this is we're going to be focusing on the neutral ending because that's what you guys decided on both Discord and YouTube. And has some of you actually tried um, fixating the results after I after I closed the poll? But I had them screenshots, so we're good. So I know what we're doing. So yeah. So. Also, if you guys want to see early access to my content, go check out my Patreon. Which it should be in the description down below. Let's get this thing started. Let's get it started. Let's get it started in here. Okay. I swear, if there's any jump scares, I am going to kick this computer. Hello. Hello, thank you for joining. I see two people are watching me. Hello, how are you guys doing on this lovely Sunday? How are you guys doing today? Dot, dot, dot. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, you can save. Good. It's like, wait, where did it go? It's like, wait, where did the save stuff go? Like, what disappeared? Like, go up and left. I forgot to get rid of that. Hang on. Oh, I should do it like that way. Oh, no, wait, I can do it this way. This is a lot better. Now you guys are able to see like the entire screen. Uh hang on, let's make this bigger for you guys. I don't know why that song's stuck in my head. Okay. Also to the stream VIP, if you guys want to join me on the stream. Go go to my server and there should be a StreamYard chat for you guys. I did ping you guys so you guys will be able to see. If you guys aren't able to see it, please let me know and I'll just copy the link and post to you guys in DMs. Okay, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> this starts off with Sonic's voice and I suck at Sonic's voice. <laughs> oh, that thing does gonna kill me. Okay. Ugh. My head. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I'm dead. Okay. Where am I? It's so dark. <laughs> you feel a sense of dread enter into your mind as you look around. Everything is so cold, desolate. Get, get rid of that. You feel like someone or something is watching you. Dot dot dot. What was that noise? Ah! I heard that noise. I forgot. You guys aren't able to hear the um sound effects. This game has sound effects. They always scare the heck out of me. Hello? The second you called out, you hear the scattering of footsteps rushing away. Was someone nearby? You look around at the chains and grotesque imagery that surrounds you. Groaning, you sit up 
straining her ears to listen more to what is lurking in the shadows. You think back. Why were you in? Why were you here again? What happened? Da da da. Oh, that is good. I love this art right here. It, what what happened to his face right there? What happened to his face right here? How are you guys doing? How are y'all loading up? Dot dot dot. Wait, that's right. You were fighting against the Solus, trying to find your way back to paradise. Or at least a way out of the cave. But you didn't want to admit it. You couldn't fight the Solus by yourself. Not without your brother's help. You were alone. <laughs> Until that horrible hairball came back behind you and just smacked you upside the head and made you pass out. Oh my gosh. I hate this hairball. <laughs> Until he came and turned them to ash. Oh, okay. And brought you here. I hate this hairball. I hate this freaking hairball. The god stares in your eyes. You feel a deep sensation of voidness. You yelp in surprise, not expect like, the god to appear so close to you. Xylo? Finding your voice and ignoring the fear that settled in your gut, you glare at the god. What is this place? The cave is dreary, cold and empty. Out of the shadows, the trademark cyan orbs come closer until he is in your full view. Y you saved me? Why? God looks down on you like you're an insect. <laughs> you suddenly feel more insecure. Why are you looking at me like that? God. You guys want to turn on my camera for this? I'll just do it right here until like it um messes up the stream or like closes it up. Or just need your signal. Something stupid. I'm gonna to check to make sure how everything's doing. Well, let's try to see if the camera does work. Let's do low definition through sixty. Okay. Hmm. Mm-mm. Going back there. Okay. I was just fixing my camera a little bit. Oh, you guys can't see my camera. Hang on. There you go. Now you guys can see my camera. Until someone joins, I'll just switch over to this point of view over here. But I know we're just gonna do it like that way that you guys are able to see. The god gives a ghost. A, a, a ghost. The god gives you a ghost. <laughs> like here you go. Here's Casper, the friendly ghost. <laughs> okay. The dark god gives a ghost of a chuckle as his idly, idly, idly. Italy, Italy, as he Italy twirls a quill. He is silent, no words, no breathing aside from your own. All you feel is a thick chill of icy wind, bristle through your fur and those eyes that radiate corruption. You lock your eyes onto the god. What are you planning? Don't tell that, I just said, I did that to my voice. Okay. You begin to feel the coldness crawl along your flesh. Every ounce of your sense is judging, to, judging you.
Your limbs won't cooperate. You cannot think or say anything. Almost as if his answer is written in the molecules of the air in the cave. The better question is, do you really think that you could harm my solace by yourself? Fighting against the numbness of your body, you look up into those ar arctic eyes. Arctic eyes. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's perfect. I'm not scared of you. <laughs> I'm not scared of you. I, my daddy is born in the police department. I can't think. I don't know. It's been a long time since I heard like a kid do that taunt thing, saying, "Ah, oh, not screw you. My dad is a nee nee nee." Like da da da. Whatever it is you're playing, I will stop it. With an instant, your vision darkens slightly, and you're pulled into the ground. And you're pulled to the ground. Well, hello. Maybe we should probably save right here. You think you can harm perfection when you can Okay, let me try that again. You think you can harm perfection when you have such little control of yourself. You look down at the dirty cave floor and shook yourself from your trance. Well, when you had have a thousand against you, it's kind of cheating. Yes, it is. It is kind of cheating. Hang on a minute. Ibuprofen. I'm a little bit in pain right now. <laughs> then you feel it. The heavy weight on your shoulders. I always feel like somebody's watching me. And I have no privacy. Da da da. To accuse me of cheating after I granted you the mercy of life. Such arrogance, heap this copy. Growling in annoyance at Zyla's pride, you struggle to your feet. I've said it a thousand times. I'm not heathen. <laughs> I can't do this voice. Goodness gracious. Hello, I see people watching me. Hello, how are you guys doing today? How is you guys? How are you guys doing? <laughs> now let me go. Oh. If you guys are not here, you guys could not hear that, but um, there was a bun crack. There was a bun crack. Some, something's about to happen. You struggle, but your body's completely frozen. The sound is beyond defeating. The only sound is the echoing of your pitiful groans as you try to force your body to move. You struggle more. They got it. I'm okay. I'm good. To demand anything of your god. Not only did you fail to defeat the numbers against you, but you have failed to prove anything to me. Besides, you did not answer my question, Spock. Just as you're about to make another remark, you start to feel anything. You start to feel an incredible, uncomfortable sensation across your face. It felt like your cheek was being burned. No, branded. You struggle to speak, but your words won't form. It feels inhuman. Almost as if there was a searing spike being drilled through your cheek. Your eyes catch a glimpse of God's claw in your peripherals. Seeing your flesh. Seeing your flesh rip off and disintegrate into nothing again. Oh my gosh! This is dark. Wait, you guys can see this? 
What the? Hang on, were you guys able to say that? Hang on, let me check. Hang on, I'm gonna check my phone real quick. What the? Is it because my camera's on? Let me check. Hang on. Oh my gosh! Okay, yeah, so good. You guys are able to see the screen. That's good. I guess maybe it was just my camera being a butt. So it kind of looks weird, so I'm going to turn on my... Like, I try to keep my camera on, but... Um... I guess the camera does not like to doesn't want to be on today. So gonna leave that off for now. Okay. Senior flesh rip off and disintegrate into nothing again. There's no way this is real. This has to be a dream. Tell me, Hephus Kope, have you learned nothing of our last encounter? How in the world can you dang it? Game! Game, please stop that! I hate it when this game does this to me. It hurts too much to speak. All of your muscles are frozen in place. God retracts his claws, which thankfully stops the bleeding, but the pain is still, is still overwhelming. You stare hopelessly into Xylo's tainted eyes. Of course you have not. The god watches you carefully. Though, the thought you've been dreading to reflect on creeps back into your mind. Heathus, I want to prove them that I am more than just some dumb copy of a god. Da da da. This is why I, I swear this comes up as a jump scare. The god pins his gaze at you. The very soul crushing weight of his gaze was heavy on your shoulders. Making you sink to the ground. He knows what you're thinking. <laughs> Your emerald eyes glare at the god, noticing that the weight of his stare has lessened somewhat. You tend to feel frozen, but you didn't feel free either. Something kind of force. Something, some kind of force was pinning you to the ground. You push yourself on your elbows, glaring at him. At least you know your place. Oh, wait, that's the wrong thing. Wrong line. Hang on, let me try that again. <clears throat> At least you know your place, little insect. You shake your head at his remark. Oh, come on! Jerk. This game is just cutting, cutting lines. This game is just like bloody cutting lines. Don't go it. Why is it doing this? I have no idea. Okay. You stop yourself from speaking. The pain in your cheek is searing. Droplets of blood begin to stain the Gosh. This is dark. How utterly un unamusing. To not even have control of your voice. You feel that heavy weight get gradually lifted allowing you to struggle to your knees. I still have my thoughts. That's a good sign. Zylo says nothing. Instead, he stares at you with those cold eyes. There's no emotion, only the feeling of dread. You're probably better off than think not of thinking, thinking anything. I suggest you make less noise from your talking cold, Heath's copy. If you do not, I may just accidentally erase you. Like petty threats would stop you. You're Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh gosh, hello. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. I can't say that. Oh, Roger Craig Smith says it better than me. Holy frick. Roger Craig Smith, Jason Griffith, Shaquille O'Neal. Any Sonic voice actor can say that better than me.
But maybe he had a point. You are all alone in his cave without your brothers. The only things you have with you are your cape and energy controller. As you sit down against the cave wall, you bring a trembling can to your cheek, touching it gently. Wincing, look at, you look at the blood that stained your gloves. <laughs> screw that up. Screw that. Screw that. Screw that. Screw that hole. Screw that little fluff ball. Hey, Crossy. Are you still mad at the voting poll? <laughs> no, I'm not, Crossy. No, I'm not. You little mischievous, cheesy cousin. Anyway. Hey, Crossy, if you feel like joining, you can. I think you I think you have the access to the streaming tier chat and Discord, my Discord server. Just scroll down where the streaming room is and you'll be able to see it. Would you not agree? I don't agree with you. You, this is no time for games. Not with that attitude and that face, frick now. Crossy says, "Okay, okay." Before you had a chance to respond, Silo vanished. Oh no! Wait, where did he go? I don't want to know. What the heck is <laughs> that? Is that supposed to be Sonic or Hegis? Oh my gosh. Because that looks like Shadow. That's silver. I thought that looks more like a wolf than a hedgehog right there. Like right there. That looks more like a wolf than a hedgehog right there. Wait, where did he go? Did Silo leave? Hesitantly resigning to the Dark God's orders, you sit up against the cold wall. You felt tired, but not the kind that makes you want to sleep. The tired that makes you angry. Angry that you're stuck in this pathetic situation. Nowhere to run, no paths leading to escape. You were like a prisoner. <laughs> God's holding prisoners. That's all the prisoners. That's all the prisoners. Why does this make you feel so disgustingly nostalgic? Looking around, you see a cluster of depilating and missing scrawlings along the walls. Inspect the cave drawings. By inspecting those paint. By inspecting those painted walls before you step closer, you can see these three figures painted onto it. One appeared strangely familiar to yourself, while the other two looked like shadow and silver. You think for a moment. Only the only the one figure with silver the one figure with silver fur looked like Oh it looks similar to wait a minute what Xylo <laughs> Yeah it's Xylo That's Ephus That's Silios and that's Xylo I know they kinda look a little like furries don't they?
This is Zylo you see on the wall. It is so unusual to see this big, evil, fluffy god look so small. His entire appearance is different. Not as evil looking anymore. Observing the painting that makes you curious, tempted to run on one of your hands over it. Maybe out of curiosity? You feel drawn to this painting, to the figures. You want to touch it. Why though? There is something about it that makes your eyes stay glued onto it. Almost obsessed. Possessed? Nah, it's just the painting. You slowly reach out but with your hand. You slowly reach out with, with your hand, tracing your fingers over the cold, slightly blue, glowing walls. As you touch it, a strange but powerful sensation runs through your whole being. It feels familiar, but suddenly, it starts to burn and sting terribly. You cannot draw your hand back. For some reason in it, you cannot look away. You cannot take away your hands. Whispers are reaching your ears as if they want to tell you something. Frustrating enough, you don't understand any of this. What is this about? The whispers continue. The heck was that? Pyo, y'all, what good? These whispers are nuts. I heard pie. I heard pie and yo yo. That's what I heard. Pie and yo yo. The whispers continue. Hephus, Hephus, son of Hephus. Your vision and sight shifted and slowly blurred. You suddenly feel dizzy and overwhelmed. A strange warmth is begging your soul and being. You do not notice it. But a weak glow of golden color is shining in your eyes. Your vision goes black. You feel your eyes shut. I will say real quick. I don't know what's about to happen. Eldest brother, are you listening? We have ne we really need your help right now. We know that you're really busy with your work, but this is important. The universe is. They are. They all feel the falling apart for some reason. Xylo slightly looked down, clasped both hands over his chest, as if, as if to hope for a possible and explained answer. Hebus always was busy. He would never stop working. Hey, like me. It was not directly toxic, they believed. But something inside both... Oh my word, he's actually starting to get like a little corrupted. You could tell a little bit. Hang on a minute. I need to really need to read back those comics anyway. But something had said both him and Celius told him it would grow toxic. And it did not exactly lessen their concerned godly souls. It only grew worse. Hifa's ears twitched ever so slightly. Sometimes they flicked and turned into the speaker's direction. And still the blue furred god would not truly look up. Surely he was listening. Somewhere. He had granted. He had to. Granted. He was very busy. Every day. All week. All the time. Always. Oh, at least training. Oh, of course I am listening. I am always listening, to dear, dear youngest brother. <laughs> he moving, he moving, he moves, he moved. The universe, the universe is, I thought they would be all fine by now. I have not sensed any ongoing bad activity as of late, my lovely brothers. What concern, what concern is there? Celius could not believe such an answer. How could not, how, how, could not believe that that why is that bit throwing me off okay 
Silius could not believe such an answer. Could not believe Hippus still would not look up from this work. He, as the middle child of the three, always tried to contain peace and understanding with their family. So far, there never had been such any concern. So why now? Why would create this? What would create this? Such distance between them. He was shutting himself off with work over and over, becoming what mortals call a workaholic. Yep. The blackbird god lightly hugged his legs with his tail. Celios could not give up, not ever, even if it meant approaching and interrupting Hebus many more times. He was their eldest brother. Celios just knew all three of them loved each other. Hebus, we are truly worried. I could sense and witness a precious creation going a little wrong. It does not feel right. For some strange reason, we need to correct whatever is wrong. That way, our creations can live a precious and loved life. We are very aware of how, how important working is for you, but Zylo is right. He lightly pinned back, he lightly pinned back both of his ears, bright purple glowing eyes looking up, up ahead towards their eldest, concerned, a little worried, confused by it any chance. Why was he just not reacting directly, not responding like he usually would so? He had sunk in so deep into his work that it was, no, not ever. Celios knew better. With this confidence, the deity inhaled while approaching him carefully with smooth steps. Hephus, our most loved brother, our eldest, we need to do something. Zala does not know what is going on. Not even I understand it. It is scaring us, brother. Please. This time, Hephus' ears twitched a little stronger. More intent on listening to his brother, he put away his star that he had that he was holding in his godly hands. Oh, why had he not noticed before? Without hesitation, he was turned around to both Celius and Zylo, a pair of golden yellow eyes shining like the sun itself, gracing the younger brothers. Oh, I am very sorry I have not noticed earlier, my brothers. I suppose I got a little too deep into working out, out this fin, this fan, fanacity. I can't read that word. Why? Wow! I can English. I can English. Okay. Oh, I am very sorry. I have not noticed earlier, my brothers. I suppose I got a little too deep into working on this fascinating star. It shall become a whole universe one day. You see. This was what I. I have seen for its future. It is so radiating. It is radiating out such a powerful and pure energy. Who knows what will grow out of from it? Zylo was quiet as he simply stared up towards Hephus with a silent, slightly judging glance. Was Hephus okay? Lately, their elder, their eldest brother was drowning himself in so much work. He did not like it, not at all. Of course, he was one of the youngest of the three gods, so he would not dare question the actions of his older brothers. But still. Hephus, are you okay? As of late, you're making us a little worried. It appears as if you are drowning in all your work. Why not take a little break? We really need your help with this. This is not something we can't handle on our own. His voice cracked ever so slightly. It was clear enough Zylo felt concerned about Hephus, not only him, but Celios as well. In soft movements, he put both of his hands over his chest, and in turn, he closed his both of his eyes as well. We are concerned about you. Should you not take a little break here at there? You are working so hard every day. It, not that I want to interfere with it, but... Silo stopped as Hephus put his hand in on top of his head, a warm, gentle smile gracing his face. Now that the youngest brother took a closer look at Hephus, those golden eyes seemed to be 
off. Inside of my youngest brother. Oh my goodness, yeah, it is. They're kind of like kind of glowing a little bit different. Hang on. I like trying to see, like, okay, so what is different about Heapus? Like, why is he so, what made him so corrupt? Like, where is the sign of corruption? That's what I'm trying to find out, because I can't remember. Okay. Zala, my youngest and most precious brother. Are you really sorry? This work I am doing right now, perhaps, it caught my attention a little too much. But I did not intend to make you both so worried. Will you forgive me for this? He was stopped to turn, um, turn one shining yellow eye towards his work desk. It surely had time. This could wake. Wake. <laughs> this could wake. This could wait. This could wait. For maybe and most likely, especially as the oldest brother from, from all three, the blue furred god should span time with Celius and Zylo. Should he not? Ever since the beginning, Hevas had sworn himself and to the whole universe, his very existence, that nothing ever may be too much of a waste of it if it meant. If it meant being with those two, with his brothers, his precious family, Celius and Zylo, no amount of work could take their blood, their bond away. A little guilt built inside of him. It felt cold. He did not like it. The god no I'm going to say real quick here. The god no kneeled to the god kneeled to get onto Zylo's height, to not appear too tall. All while Silius, the the middle brother, the one filled with so much warmth and loving feelings, stood behind Zylo. It was all just it was just the right thing he would suppose. My precious Zylo. Work can never be too much important if it meant I will start ignoring you. I did not. I'm sorry. With both arms, the blue god embraced Zylo tightly with a warm smile. With a warm smile, the door their oldest muzzle. Silius looked down on them. Silius looked down on them, on his most precious brothers, and the only family he had. Relaxing purple eyes sparkled with the warmth and many emotions seeing this. It had been way too long. Usually, neither he nor Zylo had been able to reach through Hephus. Now that it seemed like he would, he would listen to them. The mere sight of this reunion cuddling and cuddling warm Celius's heart. A little slower than Hephus, so he would not scare them. He approached Zylo behind on this, his smaller body, stretched out one hand to place it on top of sil on the silver furred god. Fine warm fingers traced and stroke over Zylo's fluffy head, sometimes reached out to split and scritch both of his brother's soft little ears. Hephus, I am really sorry for disturbing your, for your work. You are very aware of that. This means a lot to you, to create more and more, to be able to finally perfect creations. But we need you right now, dear older brother of mine, and especially. He didn't move or back away from it. Silent, with those pure silent eyes, glanced up to his brothers. Such love and adoration shined in their eyes. After a long time, you couldn't even tell how long I had been exactly. Zyla felt happiness and warmth. Without hesitation, he wrapped both of his arms around Hebe's middle, around Hebe's middle, burying his head into his warm chest fur. Right, Hebe's had promised, and he always keep his, his promise. Right? What on earth was that? Okay, so it's over. You sit there on the cold, damp floor, panting heavily. Right. Visions. You briefly remembered that you got these, these from cave paintings like this. 
random visions of scenarios that involved the old, old gods. God power induced or not, you still felt like you were going insane. Man, I really need to lay off those late night chili dogs. <laughs> oh my gosh, is that why the um? Oh my gosh, this is too funny. Always finger with your stomach, Sonic. You tiredly rubbed your eyes, standing up. You move from one painting to the next, your intention being drawn to the colors. Look at the next cave drawing. There's something about them. All three gods together like this. It reminds you of your brothers. There is Silius, the god responsible for life, as you remember. Looking at him makes you smile. Seeing someone so close to Shadow, wearing such a soft expression, was just adorable. You would almost, you would almost like to make fun of your older brother. As if that edge of her really a smile. This being, if he was even here, of course. In the middle, there was this perfection that everyone calls your father, Hephus. There was this perfection? <laughs> I guess, because that, it's because Hephus looks like you, Sonic. There go, man. You give a defeated groan, seeing him like that, all powerful, all strong and protective. It made you feel so weak. He was everything you weren't. He was everything you could aspire to be, but never would be a be. How can they even be compared to one another? How can I how can I never do what you did? If my purpose is to be like you, then man, you be pretty disappointed. You could almost feel yourself falling apart as you defeated state. It stares at his golden eyes. You quickly turn your head to the third face. That was scratched and almost scrawled out. Torn apart like someone didn't want to see him ever again. Why Lord's look why is Lord's fluffy all more dead like that? <laughs> that was the first question you had. You feel the carvings. Hoping to get some sort of information from it like the first one. Feeling from it. Feeling. The feeling you get from it. It is lukewarm. It felt similar to that uneasy feeling you got that when you were being yelled by, at by Tells. Half relieved and positive and half guilty. Despite this, you don't get a vision as vivid as the previous one. How's everyone doing so far in the chat? Safe to say, you were a little thankful that you didn't see anything like that. You moved on to the third image that catches your eye. Oh, hello. Uh, Hephus, are you okay there, my guy? Look like someone gouged your eyes out. It's a picture of what you presumed to be Heath's black eyes. His entire eye sockets are filled with a void. Some sort of some of it's even dripping on it, his cheeks, splashing and staining his skin. His scarlet marks were tainted and crippling to grow bigger, yet spread with this raw black energy. Whatever happened to the god in this painting, it wasn't good at all. You feel really weird. It felt so bad just looking at it. Something about this felt so wrong. The more looking at this painting, the more you can feel something dripping on you. It soon overflows you, giving you a feeling of drowning, yet there wasn't any kind of water nearby. You could feel your eyes wanting to squint as if something was stinging them. The more you have this feeling, the more disgust and hate you can feel within your heart. Slowly, you try to reach the painting. You can almost feel as if Hephus himself was right in front of you. It felt so real. 
you could not almost feel an extremely small part of what the god felt in this painting. Your hand soon touched the painting made it fur, and suddenly your head is filled with pure scream of the terror. Whoa! Wow! Whoa! Jeez! I'm gonna probably have to do. Okay, I'm gonna probably have to download all of these buttons, all of these um sound effects, cause I think I still have those sound effects in the game files, but cause you guys can't hear them. But I might play for you guys, play them for you guys later. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You step back immediately. The sounds of yelling still hammering in your ears. You breathe frantically for a second, yet you calm it, calm it as you can when you notice it. Your hands are shaking. Such raw emotions went through your whole body. It wouldn't make any sense human turn crazy if exposed to it any second longer. But what was that? You stay in awe and pure confusion for some more or time until the unsettling atmosphere strikes back as you echo the screams in your head. I better stay away from it. It was best to con continue. You continue to travel through the cave when you step up to the next painting. Holy, you really torn apart everything, did you? Yours fly off your mouth as soon as you think them, as usual. There is so much going on in this painting. He was, was, begin was being bad? Was it because of his dark eyes, eyes thing? At least by the look of those claw marks, he could tell he was being so nice towards his brothers. Or someone was so obsessed with him that he scratched out everything in, in the scrawling, only for him to be left. <laughs> Sounds like something you could do if you're somewhat how driven crazy. He just doesn't doesn't have the best influence on you, does he? What was left of the painting could not only be described by one word, hate. Pure hatred. Anger so deep that it would destroy everything else. Only heaps was left. How important, how powerful was he? How incredibly deeply did sin corrupt the gods? A small shiver strikes down your spine. If he was really what was like you, could you seriously do something like this? The thought that makes you sick. You could throw up imagining this any longer. You decide to continue to walk. You do not like where this is going. Even though maybe the god's origin was something you could use against Silo. Regardless, you extend your examination to the cave to the next cave representation of what possibly happened to your role model. Those other paintings with the three gods remind you of your bros, but you cannot they can never really see yourself in Hephus. Man, this guy is almost everywhere here. Almost as much almost as much as Fluffy. He's all he always wears that same expression too. When was he crying taint? When he's not crying taint, that is. That's the guy you have to live up to. Can you even pull off that sin sincere and serene expression? Well maybe. You do look a lot like him. I guess if I ever find a big enough mirror, I could try it out. Maybe I could pull it off. Why why are you talking about the expressions on his face? <laughs> well, maybe it'll be another thing that he can do that, but I can't. Okay, maybe I should think about something else. This is kind of gay depressing. You are such a cocky little twerp. <laughs> you listen more to the conversation. His voice is almost soothing to hear. It reminded him that you were like your, like your father when he would help you with doing chores and stuff. 
It sounds like work is more important than anything. I want, I want what's mine to say as mine. I want what's mine to stay as mine. Yeesh, territorial much? You can feel some confusion and sadness from Celius and Zylo by what you can hear on the conversation. What was this when things started to go downhill? The conversation reaches its end, with Heva saying that he has to get that back to work and his brothers reassuring each other after he leaves. Never mind. He's nothing like your real father. You take your hands off the painting and look away, seeing what other paintings are still intact and what else there is to do. Huh? Ain't that a cybersaurus? That looks like an egg. You cannot tell me that looks like an egg. I am the Eggman. That's what I am. I am the Eggman. Can I explain it? But this rock fills with a sense of determination. Confidence? Safety? Gazing into the center symbol like cracks fills your mind with comforting times. Remembering how your mother would tuck you in a bed, kiss you goodnight, and read you bedtime stories. How you would hug her when the years passed. That one last smile she gave you before. Mom, you close your eyes. Wanting to cherish these warm and comforting memories. It starts to dawn on you how truly alone you are. It went without saying that the silence was beginning to settle that, feeling an uneasy in your stomach. How ironic life can be when you're stuck in complete silence. Slowly, you begin to drift off to sleep. Dot, dot, dot. Oh no! <laughs> this is gonna be funny. You said you can ask me about my past. You asked me about my past. I wish to tell it to you. You and Silver listen to Shadow as he begins to talk about his past in the Par Paradise Grand Hallway. I was a prisoner for 50 years. White coats. Continuous screams. You both listen to him in surprise as he, tell, as he tells his story. It seemed almost familiar. When he was done, you think for a second and get an idea. You put your arms around both of their soldiers and hug them tight. What's that to say? You went through some tough stuff. Well, we're going to get the. Well, we're going to get our mission, guys. Isn't that exciting? The three of you continue to walk down. The three of you continue to walk like down the hall. By now, you realize that you were dreaming, and this was a memory. It's one of those better ones, though. You can't make it out what Shadow and Silver are saying, that, but they sound happy. The, shine bright, the sun shines bright through the windows, and you can almost feel its warmth, just like how you remembered it. You can almost feel the presence, too. Shadow feels calm, and Silver feels bright. Hey, Sonic? Huh? What's up, Silver? You look over to see Silver. You won't let us down like your other friends, will you? Oh, jeez! Goodness! Jeez, Silver! Don't bring that up. That is horrible. I I remember what happened because I remember the beginning of the comics. That is sad. That is just that is a that is a punch in the gut right there. Goodness, goodness gracious, Silver, you did not need to pull that. It's been hours. You lost count of how many.
We lost count of how many to be exact. We just know it had to be far too long. Staring at the blankness of the cavern walls, you try to contact your brothers. Silver, Shadow, can you guys hear me? Silence. Nothing but the sound of your breathing and as the darkness of the cave envelops you. And the whispers of many souls whose eyes peer at, at through the darkness. For the first time in a while, you feel alone, afraid, scared, anxious. No way, I'm not scared of Lord Fluffy. <laughs> Lord Fluffy, that's perfect. You could like clasp your hands over your mouth of what you just blurted out. What if you have heard what you said? Da da da. Defeated, you pull your legs to your chest and rest your arms over your knees. You feel irritated again, growling to yourself as you glare at the darkness in front of you. For a second, you wondered if your magic god powers could burn away the umbra and make it more bright. Something to make things more tolerable? You look at the crystal once more. The, sm the same warmth and warmness comforts you as it, di as it did before you woke up. Tracing, tracing your thumb over the tumbled surface, you start to wonder if things like this could amplify your god powers. I mean, if a dumb necklace can fill me with energy, then surely some random stone can have the same effect, right? Eh, who am I kidding? You put the crystal in your quills before laying in your head, in your, before laying your head in your arms. Gods, you hate this silence. I wonder if anyone knows where knows I'm gone. Surely they know by now that you're missing, right? I wonder if there's a way out of here. Wait, there has to be. I just gotta look for one. You can't stand the thought of being alone in this wretched place anymore. There needs to be an exit. Hoping to hop into your feet, you run through the maze like the maze like crave. Cave! Cave! Not crave! Goodness. Okay. It's a lot more complex than you originally thought. Full of different routes, different hallways, and different walls. Now, if I exit in... Now, if I was an exit of Fluffy's cave, where would I be? You glance and surround hopelessly until you see a tiny shred of light fill your vision. Ah, there you go. Exit here. That might be an illusion. Ah, there we go. Exit here I come. I'm gonna save real quick. You start to run. When you do, you notice the pain. The same feeling burning the same feeling of your burning heat in your cheek. The painful feeling of your hot of a hot spike ripping through your cheek. The pain was unbearable. So much that it would start that so much that the wind started bleeding again. Come on, Hedgel, you're so close. Not close enough, my Spock. His voice is screamed in your mind. Ignore it, keep going. No matter how much you run, almost there, you cannot escape your god. With a sudden icy jolt, your body freezes and your muscles tense up. Oh, we're back to here again. I swear, if this is a jump scare comes up again, I'm gonna kick Silo. You land on your bleeding face wound, gritting your teeth and letting out a stranded whimper from pain. You nearly jump out of your skin when the sudden gods appear at the sudden appearance of God. As predicted, he didn't say anything. Instead, he just stared and laughed. Eyes locked. Go away! Go away! Go away! Shoo! 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 Eyes locked on yours, reviving that horrid way feeling in your bones. 
The two of you have a moderately intense stare. The two of you have a moderately intense staring contest until God takes a step towards you. I am feeling like a rare curiosity to speak with you, Heath's copy. I need to get back to paradise, Zylo. Let me go. You struggle against his grip, but you fail to free yourself. You remain so irritating. You groan as you struggle against the concentrated feeling of God's energy. He levitates, he levi levitates you up. Inspecting your wound and entire being. Your creator would be quite embarrassed. His creation, his son, reduced to a mere prisoner in my domain. You think for a moment. Right, those old gods. It's not just that, he was copy. Your ears perk up as he walks in your levitating frozen body. What would the other Spocks think when they discover that you are missing? You struggle against his control. Zylo carefully holds his finger to your chin. You squint, but then you realize he has complete control of you. Your eyes widen. You didn't realize before it, but this god? The god came to be rid of your existence at a moment's notice. Effortlessly. Or turn you into a rotting slave. You're just this little pawn. Playing his game with to take, take and no, and no give. Zala twirls a quill. There is no safety. Hmm. So you finally come to the realization, Hephus Kope. For the moment of arrogance of the three, you have been mostly obedient. You grit your teeth at the god. Your throat eases as you feel his control lift. You feel free for now. At what cost? Your head feels like it's swelling, and you can't take your gaze off of those glacial blue eyes. What do you do if I do plan to stay? What do you think, my Spock? You step onto the back of your cape and slip over. With a thud, you hit the icy cold floor, a groan escaping from your throat. Mm. Salo stands over you. Staring down at you with a ghastly smile. St step back! I smell your fear. <laughs> Jeez, Sonic, you're sweating like a bullet. <laughs> Hi, Austin, how you doing? Hey Austin, how is your lovely Sunday going? How are you doing? After the unamused staring match, you scramble further back to his eyes and never leaving you alone. He's watching you. <laughs> I had it, it was right there. I'm good, that's good, Austin. That is good. He's always watching. I always feel like somebody's watching me. And I have no privacy. Oh. As if it's common practice by now. They hold you in a steady place. Do not give your god sm Do not give your god snark, insect. The force almost crushes you against the floor. It was constricting. You can hardly breathe. Come on, man, you gotta think of something. Some way for him to free you. Oh crud, I don't know which one. Hang on, where is it? Envelope is came, ask him to be free. Offer something. Oh crud, I don't know. Hang on a moment. I'm actually gonna have to look this up. Where isn't what's the name of this name again? Okay.
It doesn't matter which one do I pick. I know for a fact I can't demand, because that would kill me. Okay, I'm waiting for this own thing. Okay, so let's offer him something. You remember that? You remember then? You then remember the crystal you had stored in your quills? The same one that gave you comfort the night before. A noble sacrifice it might be for something that made you think of your possibly dead mother. But if this particular stone could amplify someone's ability, why not offer it to the god of everything himself, right? You take a shapely shape. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, check out my throne. Check out my Twitch. Okay, Nightbot. Okay, Nightbot, I have a question. How come you don't do this when I'm in my Twitch chat? Hmm? Okay. You take a shaky deep breath through the pain. Would you let me go if I offer you something? Zala quirks up an eyebrow. And what could you all possibly offer me? You shove- You can read his mind! <laughs> you shuffle through your quills as the pain continues to grip tightly around your body until you find and show the crystal to the god. This! <laughs> the god's eyes, wi eyes widen, observing the stone intently. Hmm. He continues to observe, noticing it on its- noting on its sharp features. He appears to be in deep thought, staying silent for a moment. Does he feel the same way about you as the crystal? You would say so, as it zaps away from your hand and into the gods. You feel the pain around your body loosen, breathe, you breathe, your breathing becoming more normal again. I'll take that as a yes. Figures, he's not one to talk. Sal looks over you, cold eyes glowing ominously. Gods, you you aren't generally terrified. Not even Amen could whip up something that you could could get your knees shaken. Well, this has to be interesting, my Spock. But I have other matters to attend to. We don't you leave for him, but he disappears before you could touch him. Out of instinct, you curl up and bounce to the ground with a minimal harm. With minimal harm. You are too. S <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, Zylo, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Okay, you are too slow. You write yourself. You write. You write yourself in time, just as you have few. You write yourself in time. You write yourself in time to see him a few feet away from you. Since you have so much energy, it might be better for you to burn it off. Go for a run. So, so to say. What? Why? What happened to keeping me prisoner here? 
This cave is a part of me. As long as, as you are here, there is no need for metal bars or guns bullets that can break from the sound barrier. Consider, consider this your new prison. But prison? Did I stutter, Copy? Well, maybe a little, well, I stuttered. You know, when I think of prison, I think of cold metal bars, a wooden bed, and a three days and a three days old drink of water and several and served rotten cafeteria food to keep you satisfied. Not a whole cave for a prisoner like me to fancy around in. What, do you just want me to leave so badly you can give me this entire cave to mooch your brain? Oh, goodness gracious. I think that's gonna kill him for like just like trying to do dad's trying just to do his voice. He looks down on you for a moment before smiling. <laughs> you would know all about prisons and forced labor, would you not? Tell me, how was the prison you were kept in? What was it like to be hostage to be a hostage of a peace treaty for five years, was it? He knew. He totally knew. You grit your teeth and and you ball and ball your fists, suppressing your rage against the god. Memories of your past present life started to flash right into your thought, right through you. The grueling pain and torture, the isolation away from your family and friends, who are now all dead or Zylo's little slaves. The crippling weight from on your gun down feet. <laughs> You shut your eyes tightly, suppressing the tears streaming down your face. It, I'd rather not say anything to you, God. He gives you a wicked smile. You seem to forget. I can read your mind, a little spark. Then why didn't you read his mind earlier? Because you asked him about the stinking rock, you stinking little fluff ball. This plot has holes. And speak of fear. Your voice practically reverberates in your skull, each syllable pounding your brain. He turns around and begins to walk away at a slow pace. I promise that our game will be fun, will be a fun one. Until then, my Spock, he leaves you alone in an area with more drawings. Heavy. Heaving and heaving, sigh of irritation, you look around. You're going with expect the walls again. You walk some more until you see some unnatural colors from the cave for the cave. You sigh, kind of fearing around another wave of it screams. Yet you curiously yet your curiosity and willing willingness to go back to me. Take a step forward. I don't know, wait, I want to check the ending key real quick. So we have to keep on exploring the cave paintings. Okay. You finally face the cave and meet. Another one of these paintings, huh? Jeez, fluffy head sure look less sadistic than... For the last, almost likable. We try to let out some jokes to lighten up your mood, but in the end, it's a failure. You look more closely at the remarkably well done rep representation. Salas seems to be enjoying his existence? He looks playful and quite happy. His trademark sign collar may be in clouds everywhere. Yeah. Okay, I'm Your live streaming. I am live streaming. You don't even know what it is. Come on, have some. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna stream. I need to go BRB for a second, so I'm gonna try to see if I can switch things around. Be right back.
I'm back y'all. How's everyone doing? How are you guys doing? I hope you guys got a drink of water, a bit of food. Be with you. I have a ta I have a taco casserole. I forgot the name Dad called them. <laughs> so we're back into the game. Let's get back to it. But once again, if you guys want to know about what's going on here, the Phantom Cast is looking for video editors. I have posted the link earlier in the chat. If you guys like want to, I can repost the link again so you guys are able to see the casting call club. Also, Rico Wolfpack is looking for moderations. If you guys want to find find the application, it's on Twitter. Go check them out. Me and Hazard will be reviewing the applications as well. So yeah. Also, help me reach the 500 subscribers on YouTube and 50 on Twitch. Also, if you guys want to help me out, I am trying to save up for a car. You guys can help me out by donating to my Kofi. And if you guys do donate to my Kofi, um, I will be spinning a wheelie, and that wheel will decide any kind of sour candy I have to eat. You can also, guys, help me out by checking out my throne room as well. See what you can find. See something like at least, like, you know, like, okay. The least, like, every can any kind of pen, every amount of penny, every little penny helps. Just saying. But you guys know how to feel like you're being forced to do this. I promise it's not going to. I promise you guys do not have to do this. It is just how. It is just recommended. So let's get back to the game, shall we? Zylo seems to be enjoying his existence. He looks playful and quite happy. His trademark sign color making clouds everywhere. Did gods have a domain for them? Didn't they share the same place to rule over planets? Something? No. Someone seems to be following him. Hephus. You shiver at the mere sight of the strange tall figure. He looked so upset. Angry? He was looming over what seemed in like a small figure of that Zala was. So innocent. Wait. Innocent? Yikes, Sonic! <laughs> he murdered trillions! You sigh before continuing to look. In this narrative, it looked like the beginning of a story. Zylo dances with the little sign cloud, oblivious to the threat of orange that seemed to seem like a large fire. It was Hephus. You continue slowly, if apprehending the next bit of information that followed on piece that would be given you. I shall save this bit. They were now fighting? For a second, you replaced them with you and Silver. No, I would never fight Silver. He's too he's too kind to ever to make me angry. He's just a little goofy moron at worst. So if they ever share the same kind of bond as as you two do how could they come to fight? Hephus Mark. Hephus Mark was so res resting behind claws and extremely brutally, extreme brut brutality. It made you feel quite like someone was trying to get to get you out of sight. It wasn't pleasant. When you stare at the pure orange that, that were like flames and burning, you start to feel that sweat drip further down your head. It was getting hot. Was it getting hot in here? This just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Why was he so angry anyway? You watch in horror as you stare to realize he was burning his brother alive. Wait, what, dude? You cover your mouth as you look at the pure terror that was on the silver lookalike, on the smaller Xylo god above. What happened? Gee, Hephus, you bur you killed your little brother like that, dang! He looks so. Scared, you hold yourself as you can't help but feel a little, little more and more sorry for the guy. It made you wonder, would you ever do that? If you're angry enough, if you filled so, if you were filled with so much rage with empty irritational thought, irrational thought, would you hurt the ones you loved? He 
You don't want to look at this picture anymore. Looks like it didn't end happily. Seeing Zyla crying like that felt so unnatural. You shouldn't play like that. This whole situation was wrong and you knew it. You look so hopeless. And Hebus did that. Looks like Hebus wasn't that perfect. No, it wasn't a true statement. Sin made him feel that way. Hevis was corrupted by sin. You grasped at your amulet tightly. You tightly shut your eyes, finding the uncomfortable questions in the back of your throat. It feels like everything was getting hotter, just like the da just like the drawing. You don't know why, but you can feel a soft begging from the depths of this painting. You can feel the pain that wasn't yours. His terrified sign eyes screamed at you. Stop his burning. Just stop the pain. No, sin doesn't make him a different person. Sin is corrupt corrupted or not. He's responsible for hurting his brother like that. You glare at the image, clenching your fists around your energy controller. I wonder if this was I wonder if this is what God powers does. Or sin for that matter. Filling your head with nothing that makes sense? You stare at the tear as they pull out of a younger version of yourself of your enemy. You're not sure of what how you're supposed to feel anymore. You take a hard gulp as you stare at the result of the terrible story. Seeing the tears from the shadow and silver look-alike poles at your heart, you can't help but feel the need of comfort. God's above, this was so cold. No longer did you feel like you were burning along with this small great god. Instead, you felt the air turn colder. And yet, you just kept seeing yourself as Hephus. He looked so shocked. He didn't know that he, he didn't even know that he almost, he almost murdered his brother. Imagine, imagine if that were Shadow and Silver. He didn't want to think about it, but what if? Anything can happen when you have unlimited infertility. Infinity, right? You wonder if Zala was watching you now, how would he feel having his enemy see this? Would he even care? Your hand is put is put on your head as you take another deep sigh. You stare at the shaken surprise the shaken surprise heaps first. Fire seemed to still burn through his hands, but it's obvious he would he was the source of the ruin. Heaps was crying too. It reminded him so much of you. I terrified of this endless terrible power taking over, controlling you. Hurting the only family you had left. You turn towards the crying shadow look-alike. I can't help but feel heartbroken. His, he was holding his brother together as best as he could. And shocked to see the terrible pain his youngest was in. And then the youngest. He was falling apart. Cracks on his body. Burn marks. He was the one. He was on the ground. As leftover in as leftover in bears, circled a small family. So it was a lie then. You re you recall the time you met with chaos. Chaos a long time ago was Hevis' apprentice. He of all people knew Hevis, and it was obvious he was very, he was also very biased. Every aspect of his creations were laced with a dedication and purpose. Nothing was ma made on accident. But he made plenty of accidents by the looks of it, eh, Chaos? He realized just then, there's something etched on the wall. He barely missed it. It reads, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, right there, I am sorry, right there. Holy freak, I just saw that. It's right there. I am sorry. 
Did Zyla write this? No, he couldn't have. Could he? You don't want to look at this anymore. Uh-oh. The cold becomes worse. As you look at the last image you have at the end, you have the energy you've to find. Huddling with your cape, you thank the anger a great blue cat soul for making you wear this all the time. Looking at this image, you can't help but feel like a sense of nothing hits you, like a void builds up inside you, a need, a want, a rage that will never burn out. Power that will never stop growing, a terrible, terrible emptiness that burns that will never be filled. You remind, you're reminded of the time that you were lost in your power when you did something so unforgivable. Guess I'm not so different from your drama queens. <laughs> you laugh at yourself at the dumb joke, but after all this time, it makes a little bit of sense. Avis was a real jerk, wasn't he? To Zyla, he just got what he deserved. He was now dead thanks to his stupid accident. You can't just be a good brother, dude. What's your problem? You can, you just burn your brothers. And now, your happy accents come to butt you in the butt. <laughs> You're awful for doing that to them. No matter how hard you try, you're always hurt. You always hurt them. If it wasn't you, it if it wasn't you, it was that power, right? But what is this all about? You didn't even you're not even focusing on that. Adventure time. Come on, grab your friends. Sorry, I got distracted by me as a streamer here. You deserve that. You deserve to be here, in this place. You never should have left them. You didn't realize you were yelling at yourself until you punched the wall. You blink at your action. Why in all- why in the world did you do that? Sometimes I wonder. You wince, feeling the wound on your cheek pulsate the with pain. You should probably stop talking. If I was an accident too, Hephus, after everything I've done, everything I kept on doing, everything I keep on doing, you didn't even realize you were crying too. I get it, you know. Hephus makes you all these terrible, Hephus makes all these terrible mistakes. Then up comes Zylo. He's just the project of your ac He's just the product of your accidents, right? And now he's around hurting so many people. All because you weren't because you aren't what they needed you to be. You wiped your eyes, turn away, turning away from the walls. You didn't want to look anymore at any more cave drawings. The temperature drops a little, and Lord Fluffy makes his appearance. He doesn't look at you, but you can feel him staring at you from his peripheral. Did you have fun exploring coffee? Find anything interesting? Ah, crud, I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna ask about Hephus. Your mind starts to race on at your mind starts to race on all the cave paintings you saw earlier. The one that stuck out to you most was the eldest one himself, Hephus. Your mind started to race with the questions and thoughts about him. You couldn't stall any longer. 
Yes, I have. I have many questions. The satellite turns the face towards you, listening with intent. I've been thinking about the god who made my brothers and me, like a lot. I know you two didn't get along like bread and butter, but <laughs> who is he, Anne? Was I made to be just like him? Da da da. I can only assume that was his intention. He looks at you, almost bored, and yet he didn't leave again. Despite how bored he seemed, when he looked, your mind still raced with questions and what ifs. So, I was made to be a power hungry god copy of your brother? The god's eyes didn't leave you, but the air in the cave dropped in temperature. I give you plenty of time to find the answers written on the very walls. And that is the answer you deuced? Isn't, it isn't an answer, but. You hesitate for a second. Wondering if you should even. Honestly, what more can you lose other than your dignity? Xylo, he, was, he didn't seem much of a great guy. At least, not how everyone hyped him up to be. Xylo's eyes widened at your response, just enough to be noticeable. You could feel presence in your mind, cold but not freezing. Was that reading in your mind? Were your powers getting stronger? His expression returns to normal, however, and he just looks away. I do not need any of the sympathies of maggots. I am not trying to sympathize with you. I just... I've seen a lot of terrible things. I think from those walls. They almost tell a story, right? I think... I think it's hap something happened between you and Hephus. Or something. He hated admitting it. It really... He admitted it, really. He kind of felt sorry for this monstrous god. After seeing everything on the cave walls and trying to put together some sort of story or any sort of continuality out of it, a piece of you really felt for Xylo and what he possibly went through. Xylo, did, did you... Were you ever abandoned by Hephus? Or your brothers? Did they... Oh, I for curse you, curse you, curse you, curse you, curse you, curse you. Your body tensed up, energy clinging to your. Yes, I am live streaming, and the live streams will be able to hear the printer. You feel your body tense up. Energy clinging to your skin as you try to finish your sentence. The pain in your cheek begins to act up again. You can feel the blood dripping down from the wound. Fearing you may have gone too far with the questions, you look into Zyla's cold eyes. That, that is enough! Oh goodness! I said that I did not need any pity from you lowly coffee. I hate this! <laughs> Teleporting you away would have been easy. Not entertain, but not entertaining, it seemed. Instead, God uses telekinesis or psychokinesis to launch you onto some backwards roller coaster ride through the caverns. You were jerked right, left, and way down again. The caverns echoed with the screams of other prisoners and or, cack or cackles of solace. Eventually, you wound, you would land in the cavern. That's even more barren than the last ones, and quieter, and lonelier. It was dead silent, and not a soul in sight. It was quiet, so quiet. You can't describe how loud something like pure silence can be. Part of you was glad that the loud scattering sound of the solace was gone, but being stuck in a nullifying room, that wasn't the solution that wasn't the solution you thought it'd be. You see no openings, no gaps, no escape routes, no hallways, nothing. All I did was ask about Hephus. Is his family that much of a sore spot for him? There's some sort of story. 
There is some sort of story with the cavern cave drawings. Something that spoke volumes about the old gods and their bonds. Yet, it felt like the story was missing several chapters in between. You resign, sinking against the cave wall and staring up at the ceiling. Honestly, you didn't know what to think. You're all alone now. Just like you, though when you were a prisoner. How delightful. You lay on the cold cavern floor. It's cold. With a heart full of regret, guilt, and grievance, you begin to fall under sleep's alluring spell. The door handle feels heavy on your hand, and when you open the door, but you can't let it stop that stop you. There's something on the other side. Inside, at our silver and shadow? Zilchet? There you guys are. You take a few steps for or just then stop. It's like there's some kind of wall keeping you from approaching them. Uh, guys? They don't acknowledge you. Too occupied in making, making their missing persons poster. There's some kind of static over their faces. But their voices just sound clear enough. How many, how many more should we make? Should we? He might be dead. Oh, <laughs> guys, I'm right here. Shadow, that's not funny. You start banging on the invisible barrier. Still nothing. Come on, morons. This is no time for revenge tricks. Still nothing. Brothers. This time they did look up and the static clears from their faces. They look shocked and crying. Sonic? You're still slamming on the invisible wall. Cracks run through it. Help me! Fluffy has me! Get Antoine! Get anyone! As Silver rushes towards you, you bring your fists down, ready to break the wall. Sonic, where are you? Now I think you're losing it, Silver. But I... Guys! You pound on the glass, tears streaming down your face as you scream for your brothers. You heard that too, didn't you, Shadow? What I heard is you not using a staple gun. <laughs> now let's keep making these, po these stupid posters. Brothers! <laughs> oh, and you broke the glass. And then you wake up. You blink a few times and sniffle. You're crying in your sleep. Why? The voices in your brothers echo in the voices of your brothers echo in your head, calling your name. Did you dream about them? This probably would have been more effective and more um sad in a way if it wasn't me voicing this. <laughs> if we had like actual voice, if we actually like the actual people like to, like actually we can actually do Sonic or Shadow's voice. Jump scared count. Jump scared count, I think. Yep. I think Silver Crying and yep, there you go with the printer. So yeah, I think Silver's crying. He was crying. In your dream, you dream about your brothers again. This time, they're crying. They think you're dead. I'm gonna kill that printer. Right in the bloody stream, Papa. <laughs> oh, is that your insurance stuff? I can't say what it is on live. Oh. Finish printing. Wait until the printer finishes before you push the output tray enter extender. <laughs> you press on the ink. Hold <laughs> on. gonna do the rest of it. Okay. In your dream, you dream about your brother's week. Oh, I already read that part. <laughs> Why can't you mine a link with them? You miss your family. You slightly wonder if he has ever felt like this. It's blank. I feel so cold. This cave only gets colder. Somehow it feels like Mr. Fluffbutt is the only warmth around here. This place was torture. Absolute torture. 
It felt like the walls were closing in, suffocating your entire being. His cave held so much knowledge, so many things that you couldn't even comprehend. But Zylo, he knew everything. Those were your dreams you kept seeing? Those carving on the walls? You sigh. Shad Silv. Shad Silv, guys. I miss you guys. Try as you might, you can't stop the tears from falling, forming and falling. He hated admitting defeat, but it, it wasn't like you, but. After what you've seen, you've dreamt. I hope you guys don't see me as a as a deserter. You can almost hear Shadow's arrogance in your mind. Why did you do who sounded so stupid? Then you have Silver who's concerned about your well being was on the brink, brink of suffocating. Sonic, are you okay? Did Zel Zelda didn't do anything to you, did he? Other than ripping some my skin off and showing me how just how terrible of a brother I've been, no. It took you a moment to understand the gravity of what you just said. You? Someone less than a hero? No way, you're Sonic the Hedgehog! Hero! Right? Chief is copy. Was that Zylo? You didn't notice to tell- You didn't notice him teleport into the area. Looking- Looking to- Looking up to you, you feel a sense of- No, not dread, but melancholy? There is something in you that intrigues me. You don't bother to put up a fight rather than allowing Zalo's powers to engulf your being. He pulls you to your feet and turns his back. Come along, my Spock. Let us talk. You're, si you're silent. Okay, hang on. Let me save real quick. You're silent as you stare at the god. A copy of Hephaest. Zalo looks... Looked into your exhausted eyes. Do you really believe that you are nothing like your creator? You think back of what you did you were trying to say the first day you woke up in the cave. This time, you started a little more calmly. I'm not Hephus. I'm nothing like him. I'm not some fancy god who helped create everything we know and see and stuff. I definitely couldn't create potential gods with my magical breath or whatever. But that's okay. Whenever Eggman attacked me and my friends, I didn't need any god abilities to stop them. All I had to be was me. Sonic the Hedgehog, fastest thing in lab. The salad doesn't scowl, exactly. More like it was annoyance. <laughs> like, stop. Like, that's stopping you. You've been saying that I'm different from him, right? Well, so, well, so he has everyone else. Not gonna lie, it got me down first. I'm supposed to live up to him, after all, but I can't. I can't, and, like, I can't either continue stressing about what the same and what di what's different and meet and meeting the standards set up for me, or I can't embrace who I am. It's not like you haven't been doing the same thing, right? Excuse me? You know, your whole I am everything I am everything I am. Yes? I am live streaming, mother. Excuse me, everyone. My mother's doing the chicken dance. I love you too, mama. Good night. What? No, you're not spraying that water bottle on me. <laughs> Cake and boba tea. Huh? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know what? If you had your driver's license, you could go get your own. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, how does that work? Hey, Mom, I'm live streaming. You want to say that out loud? Elizabeth would get her job. Mom, not get my Get her right. driver's license. Hang on, hang on, hang she on. Did. Hang on. Mom. That's me. I, they can't hear it. Okay, now you can say it. I love you more it. than Lizzie. Lizzie. Hey, Lizzie's mom. <laughs> you love to give me a heart attack on stream, don't you?
I'm calling dibs on that cheat suit. You can't stop me. No. You have yeah. dogs out here you don't take care of. I'm not giving you a third one. I take care of them. Uh, <laughs> when did you give them a bath? Sorry, guys, my mom tried to embarrass me on live stream. Anyway. You know, your whole I am everything and I am nothing, I am perfect, that kind of stuff. Where did you even start anyway? When you became the soul god, is that the standard you set for yourself to carry all of that existence or something? <laughs> for the last few minutes, Zalo has looked at you like a deer in headlights. It's actually kind of funny, but you try not to laugh. <laughs> I'm already laughing. You do want, you do want to hear what he has to say. He shoots, he shoots an ir irritated look, gazing closer. You can see other emotions swimming around, but to your luck, Zala doesn't answer. Perhaps he doesn't know the answer. Was this something he's never discussed before? You're about to ask more questions, but God speaks up before you. What kind of a question is that? What is so important to you? Well, you tell me. What kind of motto is that? I want to know why you have, why you feel like you gotta say it so much. Your questions are strange, my Spock. You tilt your head by this expression. Why is he annoyed now? It appears as if he doesn't want you want to answer you. Is this question really that strange? You look at Zyla with a confused expression. Well, yes, maybe it is a strange question, but I want to know, you know, why do you say it over and over? Like, do you have to say, or is it just a habit of yours? Come on, I want to know. And it's a Spock. I am not quite sure of what you expect for an answer. I am God. I do not need to answer such silliness. You grow a little frustrated, perhaps even a pout. What a stubborn guy. So if you want answer my so if you want so if you want answer your questions, then perhaps something else? You fidget a little on your place, right in front of God. This was really something. Xylo, God of blah blah blah, actually giving you time to time to ask him questions. He definitely wouldn't have done that two days ago. Was it because something changed? You kind of feel that way yourself, to be honest. Okay, let me ask you something else. Why do you keep... Mom, what? Put your on your bathroom. Thank you. Tomorrow, you need to make sure you're... Okay, let's. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to why do you? Why do you keep referring to yourself as God of everything? Does that mean you're also God of, uh, you know, God of life and such? Because everything means truly everything, right? What? Oh, it appears that as if this throws him out of line a little. Has he become truly confused? Even if it's just for a little moment? Strange. He's always seemed so tyrannical. In control. Let's see how far you can take this. Of course it does, Hephus Copy. I am everything and nothing. I am sure that if I even give you plenty of examples these these last few days. Yeesh, he wasn't kidding. How could he forget such a fun forget such fun times like 
having him freeze your body, getting your face ripped off, or even being forced to bow down to him. Yes, that is exactly fun stuff. Yeah, that will exactly be fun. Bowing down to a football. That's perfect. That's always fun and entertaining, huh, fellas? Uh, but the last time, my name is Sonic. Of course, I haven't forgotten your proof that it that you are this and that, Silo. Silo looks irritated at the use of his name and frowns, turning his gaze away from you. He folds his arms, looking guarded. And yet, you still keep asking these questions. What do you plan to do with my answers? He asked you with a little... He asked you what you will accomplish with that. Have you not already stated your reasons? Or can Zylo not remember anymore? By the thought of this, you have to hold back a little snicker. I thought I already told you my reasons, or haven't I? I want to know why do you use them over and over. For what exactly? You use them to answer everything I ask you to say. Say. Everything I ask and say to you. Look, Fluffy. I am stuck in your cave, you know. I cannot truly, well, escape. So at the least, I want to know this. Xylo glares at you and uses his powers to lift your body. You would, you do, you would do well to not call your god names, Copy. You want these answers so badly. Give me one good reason why I should tell you everything. You let out a little surprise gas as God lifts, it, lifts your body off the ground. Oh, this again. While struggling a little in the air, he uses this opportunity to meet Zylo's bright cyan eyes. You know, oh by now, there is a little more to this. And you, and you want to know it. Badly. Lifting my body again? Oh, come on. All right, all right. I have my reasons. Yeah, I do have some. You're saying, but you're saying these phrases to absolutely everything I do and ask. Or to anyone. But this can't be all. I don't believe that. Is this you speaking? Or is it sin influence is talking? I want to know why. I really want to. I... You know what? Why are you trying to get closer to Zylo? Why are you trying to reach him? Looking into those cyan eyes, you feel something. Something aching in your chest. It hurts. Zylo's, ga Zylo's gaze. There's too much emotion swimming around. His muzzle twitches. It takes him a couple of moments to speak. I sp oh no, here we go again. Here we go again. Yay! What? What kind of question is that? I am Zylo. Perfection. Nothing. Everything. He couldn't feel it. You could feel his energy wavering. He seems to notice that the drop. He seems to notice that it drops you. I need a drink of water. Holy frick, my throat's getting sore. He takes a few steps back and looks around the area again. You could feel Zyla hesitating. Something that God has not done before or yet, not ever. Something inside you breaks, even more as you can see this. As you, as you see his expression, his emotions? For a short moment, you can feel your fear from before falter and turning into something else. Something somber? He does not look at you. He even drops you to the ground. Your chest starts to hurt a little when you try to catch a glance of Zylo's cyan eyes. You don't want all of this, am I right? Behind your I am Zylo, I am nothing, I am everything nonsense, there is more to it than meets the eye, right? Tell me what, tell me what I am wrong. Tell me. Tell me that this is the only use that this is only you speaking with those lines over and over. It doesn't matter. His voice is quiet. After a moment, he turns to you. He spoke a little more firmly. What I want is perfection. A world without seeing others have happiness. Have the happiness that I can no longer have. Happiness that... That was ruined a long time ago. That this, that is my world. All that I made and will keep making. All this time, 
You have given yourself titles such as hero, the fastest thing alive. That is certainly rich coming from a friendless orphan. Gee, you wonder who I... Gee, you wonder who you have to thank for that. You don't say it, though. Try, to, try not to even think about your parents and your friends. Just focus on Zylo. He's trying to gain the upper hand again, but that won't do. You can see some cracks by now. You can see some cracks now. You cross your arms a little frustrated, pouting. Just the same song as before. You wonder, is this truly the only thing you will reply with? There has to be more. Friendless orphan. Now that's something, and that's super original. Come to think of it, who exactly do I have to thank for that one? Fine, sure, perhaps it is your world, but what do you mean with happiness you no longer have? Really curious, you will admit, but at the same time, it's somber. When you hear Zadlo saying this, the aching in your chest only grows stronger. Slowly, you press your hand to your chest. You, you say you cannot have happiness anymore. Why is that? Who took it from you? Uh, is it he? I mean, oh! Your oldest brother? Yeah, you can't say he if it's in front of him. I just realized that. Zala stares at you. He almost looks tired. No, trying to kill you with, trying to kill you with his ugly staring or twirling his quills like a, like how a human you used to know would twirl his, his, his bushy mustache. <laughs> Light envelops the cave suddenly, and you are both in a dirt clearing outside. There is a faint breeze and the smell of plants. It's nighttime. The millions of stars twinkling above. Hephus. He had everything. Me, Celius, and Hephus had each other, our companions, and all of the existence. But that was just not good enough for my eldest brother. I suppose that means Celius were not enough. He betrayed us, so I sought to end him. I did just that. He turned his glowing eyes at you, to you, and then I found out about you three. You, who would serve out his son, the Celius copy, who would replace my older brother, and my own copy, who would replace me. There is venom in his voice. He get, he gazed back to the sky. You say that you are you are nothing like he is, that you are Sonic. What? Pray tell makes you Sonic. You grew more silent when Zyla suddenly uses your own name. Not even Spark, not Hephus Coffee, not Insect or anything. He, Zyla, the god of everything, uses your name. Sonic. For a moment, it's the only thing you do is stare at him into those wavering, silent eyes that are filling themselves with such bitterness. Looks like he still doesn't but like talking to about his brothers. Your gaze wanders all around the place. But those millions of stars sparkling and twinkling above and twinkling above. What a serene view. It somehow calms down your previous feelings of cold fear and anxiety about what you ha what could have happened to you. If God grew upset, but now you're tilting your head at the gaze above gaze up the millions of stars, and, like glancing down shortly, when Zala turns his gaze back at you. It could catch a brief moment of sparkling stars inside those glowing cyan eyes. What a beautiful sight. You... He just took it from you and your older brother, Celius. But why would he? Why do you think that he weren't... Why do you think that you weren't good enough for he was? It doesn't make sense. I am not Hephus. I'm not him, Zylo. You said it yourself. Everyone says it. I am me and me alone. I am Sonic. You step closer to Zylo as you try to catch his attention. You talk to God on equal footing. You feel it's what you need to do. 
God and Exile understand. You call me by your name, not even copy, not even someone, something with he was again, but my actual name, see? This is what makes me, well, me. My personality, my actions, my thinking, my entire being, it belongs to me. No God power, not even Hebrews will decide what or who I am. And unlike Hephaz, I will never harm my brothers. Something about what you just said? Silo's eyes were there now, and you, you are Silo. This sin that they all, that, this sin they all talk about, you can't fight, fight it back. You have your right to be yourself, and you know this. You are hurting. Everyone outside can see this. Your voice slowly grows quieter. You feel sorrow. At some point, Zalos shut his eyes. The breeze his left his quills slightly. Perhaps you are right. He looks close. He closes his eyes again. Light begins to surround his form. At first, it was blacker than space, but then it began to lighten and turn into a binding into a blinding bright light. Harmony! It is okay. It is me, Zara. <laughs> the chibi thing's back! Uh, what the heck? <laughs> you instantly jump back. What, what, Zyla, wait, 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 is this? What happened to you? You, you look like... Like... The one that had jobs on the stainless glass we saw back in paradise. Yeah, that's what it is. Is this? Your breath hitches, hitches as you look at him. Instead of reality, instead of, instead of really tall, dark god with cyan eyes holding a menacing glow that promises pain, this being had empty had empty eyes that reflecting millions of stars from above. Such a pure and bright scion. Is this the real Zylo you never expected? Zylo, you look so different. Is this, you know, this tank gone? Did it disappear? Whoa, this is such a difference. Does this, does that mean you're free again? Free from whatever has pained you? No, 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 that's not how that works. You slowly move a little towards Zylo with careful steps. Reaching out one arm with hesitation. You want to touch his silver fur. <laughs> Zyla looks so fragile at this moment. You want to hold him and help him to be here for him. This is so weird. If this taint disappeared, if this taint disappeared, then maybe, maybe hope can return. Zyla smiles brightly and steps forward. He lifts his arms and places your, his hand on you, on you, patting your head gently. It does. I greatly thank you for this, son of Pete. I apologize. You prefer the label Sonic. <laughs> I have watched you for the last few days as I have. I slowly gain the strength to fight back against my worst desires and return to who I was. I want this is Okay, I have to say this. He looks gay. I'm sorry, he does look gay. I do not understand why where you received such confidence from. Well, my parents always try to encourage me and each other to do our best. Do you have anyone like that? I had others. You're quiet for a few moments before you walk closer to him. You know, there's something chaos would tell me back in paradise. Before the gods had temples of churches, they had, they just had us, mortals. We acted as their priests, priestesses, and followers. Even if we like did not not have any grand monuments or large followings, things like there used to be. Used to be. We still have God. We still have you. Still have God? I I Sal looks down at you, awestruck. Then he begins to cry. 
It was painful to think of my past family again, but as I did, I started to remember the brighter aspects of my experience. They remain gone, however. You froze when Zyla comes closer to you and then pats your head. It feels warm, so comforting, so unused to what he was before. It marks you sad. I just see him see the god like this. Without hesitation anymore, you wrap both your arms around Zyla's legs tightly, once again surprised, this time by how soft his fur was. For the first time, you're close to him. Your heart feels warm. You were able to help your god get better. You can, you can do more. You should do more. Zyla keeps crying, and you feel tears welling up in your own eyes from your from the overwhelming sorrow holding you, holding both of your hearts captured. His and yours for some reason. It feels as if Zylo uh, sorrow transfers into your soul. You cry along with him. Zylo, I, yes, we still have you. You are free from it now, right? You are, you are yourself. And I promise you, you are not alone. You'll never be. I'll stay with you. We can overcome with this together, you know. The short hesitation you start to nuzzle your head in Zyla's little fur. Zyla's little fur. <laughs> that sounded wrong! <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounded so horrible. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, I really am, but I'll be with you. Even though I'm not Hephus, and I never will be, I am Sonic, and you are Zylo. We can get over this together. Zylo continues to cry as he kneels to hug you. His tears run down his muzzle onto your head. Do you, do you not hate me? Well, I suppose I got good reasons to. But what's the use of holding on to grudges, you know? You can't feel a god trying to gulp down his sadness, trying to keep a small silver try to keep a small sliver of control. <laughs> I remember everything I have done. I need to fix. I need to return everything back to normal. I I must return your birthing parents. Your life, goodness, I have taken so much from you. Your thought your third times as Zyla mentioned your deceased parents and enslaved friends, he would bring them back? It makes you really happy, even, even now, without all this taint and sin, you would have the powers to do something like this? You feel your blue fur again a little soaked, as Zyla's glowing tears flow into it. But at the moment, it doesn't matter. When Zyla hugs you, the ache in your chest grows, it becomes warm. Fluttering like little butterflies? He feels the need to be around him, to be with him. I don't ship this. You want to always make sure that sin can never crawl back into this pure, hurt soul. Back into such bright, innocent, cyan eyes. Merely looking into them makes you feel warm and so sad at the same time. You wrap your arms around Zylo to bring him closer. You raise your head to meet his. It takes... It takes a moment to regain control in, of your mouth. You, you can do this. You really can. Zyla, I know you're holding back to your, back your sorrow. You don't need to do that. I'm with you. You're not alone. Just let it out. I got you covered. Promise. <laughs> right now you are. Inhale shortly. Then breathe out with a small smile on your face. You are so important. It feels, it feels really good to see you like this. I don't like this. I just want to skip this, but unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> Without the, all this destruction stuff, of course. You think about the last few days. Despite everything, your smile widens. Zala remains silent while crying into your blue fur for a little longer. He echoes, his echo. He echoes out sobs and snivels filled with guilt. Seems nice to leave. Seems nice to leave. Seems nice to leave. 
Please, mom. I don't get it. He tightens this hug around you, almost des desperately trying to hold on to your reality like a lifetime. D do you... Do you... You really do not hate me? How could you not, Sonic? I said so many terrible things to your family and friends. I am... I am so sorry. Yes, I revive your parents. I need to bring them back. I admire your courage. I feel more. As long as I have you here with me, it feels wonderful. Zala lightly loosens his hug to look or look into your eyes. His smile look his smile looks a little pained and sad, guilty. Thank you, my spark. Thank you so much. I need to make up for everything I have done. I wish to feel whole again. Slowly, Zala brings up one arm and wipes away his tears. It appears it appears to be embarrassed with the silver for a god. Sonic? You tilt your head at a gentle at the gentle god before you. I have so much to fix. Would you like to help me? Yeah, he says I'm sorry, Ken. That's how we're gonna get the neutral ending. Listen, Zylo. I'm really glad that I could help you out, and I really want to help you get back to saving the world, but well, I guess you can't well, I guess you can just read my mind. Zyla smiles down at you. Reassurance reassurance in his tone. I could. But I would like to hear what you want to say, hey, Sonic. You're probably are grinning back stupidly now. Honestly, there's nothing more I really want to do now than see my friends again. Shadow Silver, I spent so long away from them, and then that stuff with you, well, evil you, came up like, I just want to chill out and hang out with them for a bit. I want to introduce Shadow and Silver to you, this version of you. Then we can all help you restore the world together. Oh no. <laughs> I swear, oh no. You catch Zylo wiping a tear from his eyes and oh. Chaos. Oh, chaos. What did you say? You'd be lying if you had said you did you still didn't fear him a little. Oh no. I'm sorry, Sonic. He sighs and looks up to you in the sky. It seems like an eternity passes before he looks back at you. All those stars up there? He just made them, one after another, day after day. No matter how long it took before one star to be made, no matter how many eons it took to flawlessly leave the universe into existence, he was devoted all this time to it. Sure, we have had our, we had our hands to assist him, but he was sometimes did not want to help, did not like the help. He was so obsessed with perfection and berated off to the potential of true ideology of perfection that he preferred to work alone. The Silverford God looks to the sky, smiling. Not, pos not a positive smile, but not a negative one either. His face was full of melancholy. Getting him to look upward from his walk, let alone spend time with me or his family, it was frustrating. So, what's that got to do with what I said? Zala turns to his beautiful blue sky eye. Turns to the beautiful blue sky eye as she. His beautiful. I can't say this line right. Okay. Zala turns his beautiful blue eye sky eye, sky like eyes to you as his pl as he places his hand on your head. You look so much like him, and yet you are nothing like him. He has hardly made it, made time to chill out or hang out. He never wanted to relax. Work and keep busy. Work and keep busy. Well, work and keep him busy for what helped him shape the world into what it is now. <laughs> oh, I know a couple of folks like those. Tails would sometimes get in, gets too into his inventions, and Knuckles, well, you gotta have a really good reason to get him off his island. I found ways though. Confused, he raises a brow at your statement. Ways. Yeah, like, Eggman or some other threat comes up, so I get their help. Other times, I challenge Knuckles to a game, because he loves showing off how good he is at stuff. Or I tell Tells about a new place I want to travel to. Heck, sometimes I'll just tell him Mom made him made her famous chicken casserole or blackberry juice. He loves that. I can't wait to see him again. You feel a fleeing sense of dread in your chest after saying that. 
If I get the chance to. Silence fills the, fills the dead air before Zala gives you a somewhat pitiful grin. I promise that I will be there to help explain everything. Wait, did he know something you didn't? Uh, stop thinking so much! <laughs> you mentally slap yourself out, out of any further theorizing or respond to him. What? No, you don't have to. Realizing that you may have come off a bit more awkward than usual, you clear your throat and try to relax your tense posture. Thanks, though. They listen to me. What if they do not? Why wouldn't they? We're friends. I mean, yeah, sure. Tails and Amy were in, were in the best mood when I finally came home. But, well, I'll just have to make them listen. If they're still around, they have to be, right? That is your plan? Heh. <laughs> Things have worked out for me when I had, had, less, had less of one. God shakes his head, grinning from ear to ear. You're truly nothing like Kephas. There, it, there it was again. Another mention of Kephas. Another comparison. Another kick to your self-esteem. <laughs> hey! Can you stop comparing me to Hevis? I know I was made from him, but I'm pretty sure I'm my own hedgehog. Zala seems to nod if you just reminded him of something he had forgotten. Right, my apologies. It's cool. I don't mind some titles like Best Buds, Son of Hevis, Hero, or Chili Dog Concierge. <laughs> Sonic, you have an obsession with chili dogs. You have a big obsession with chili dogs there, Gummit. I always go back to my good old name. Ogville? <laughs> Ogville? Yeah, no! <laughs> 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 Ogville? <laughs> It's perfect. No, no, no. I meant Sonic. My name for myself. Ah, of course. You couldn't have sworn that his face did not look so innocent for a split second. <laughs> huh. Anyway, I should probably be getting back to paradise soon. I don't want any worry for my bros too much. Then I can find my family and friends. Zalo seems hesitant for a moment, but it gently taps her shoulder. Uh, before I send it back, can I ask you something? Sure, what is it? Do you really call yourself... Man, chili dog concierge? <laughs> what, do you think of... What, you think you're you're a better one? Actually, I have never had one. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, he's never tried food heaven before. You have to solve this. Well, I don't have some on me right now, but I've got to have you try one later. <laughs> I would love that. Oh, trust me, you will. <laughs> First, it all starts with a warm weed bun. Fluffy and soft and tender. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> Can I please have my dad just like breathe this whole thing, please? Oh no. <laughs> Okay. Fluffy and soft to, to the touch. Next is a sausage. It can be grilled or cooked on a barbecue. Always to perfection. Mm, Sonic? Next is the onions. No, because no chili dog ain't complete without onions. Uh, unless you're me. Because Sonic and the chili. Oh boy, if it's not with a bit of bacon and spice. If it's not with a bit of bacon and spicy enough to knock your pants off. Sonic luck. You stop to see what a hot, a hot plate of chili dogs. It stands right in the middle of a dew covered, of the dew covered grass. Just waiting to be devoured. D did you? Not me. You. <laughs> As you were talking, they appeared. You have quite the potential of your powers. <laughs> His smile wide. And quite the appetite. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't hear him over the smell of actual perfection as you stuff your face. <laughs> I, oh my gosh. 
Mattel looks at you for a second and holds his stomach as he laughs at you. You respond by picking up the plate, chewing the rest of the chili dog in your mouth, handing him one. What are you waiting for, Zylo? It might be... It might not be like how Mom makes them, but I think you'll love them still. God calms himself enough to carefully pick up one and takes a bite. You watch as he chooses and his eyes widen. I'm- oh my, this is superb. I can't say it. <laughs> okay. You both watch the stars as you eat. Bugs buzz by. Birds begin to stink, sing to the rising sun. And the smell of spicy food lingers in the cooling morning, morning air. Look over at God, who is still so much taller than you, even while sitting and smile- even while sitting. <laughs> yes, he's still taller. Who was still so much taller than yourself, even when even when sitting, and smiles kindly. He returns the expression as his soft hand finds itself on top of your own. Thank you, Sonic. I have so much to do, and I'm so glad I could have this moment just to relax. I suppose. You're welcome, Zyl. Anytime you want to hang out, just pop on over and par pop over to paradise. You can bet. You can bet I'll be there. You can be sure that I will. Goodbye, Sonic. His farm begins to glow brightly, too brightly to see. You close your eyes and turn away. When the light fades, you open your eyes to the dawn. Zylo isn't there. <laughs> Goodbye, Zylo, huh? Right there, Zylo was, stand was standing is a where Zylo was standing is a basket. When you open the cover, it looks like mom looks like mom's chicken casserole. And a couple of bottles of blackberry juice. On the side of the back basket, it reads, "In case your best friend needs some incentive, some incentive to hang out." <laughs> your smile stretches over your face at the next. You pick up the basket and start running. You notice another note nearly fall out of the basket. Thinking quick, you grab it and read it. May all meals be eaten in peace and with love. And thus, the universe was saved thanks to the Mobius creator of the Chili Dog. Aw, uh, John Chili Dog! <laughs> if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have made best friends with the god. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, <laughs> John <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's perfect. And the freaking chili dog! <laughs> the chili dog's like right there. <laughs> okay, well that's the end of stream, so... Let's see, since Mizu, let's see, is Mizu still streaming? Hang on, let me see if Mizu's still streaming, hang on. Oh my gosh, that was just perfect. Okay. John had a chili dog, yep. <laughs> oh yeah, she's still streaming, okay. So I'm gonna end stream here. So once again, if you guys... Once again, the Phantom Chaos is looking for video editors. Please check out the Casting Call Club where it says Phantom Editors. Or you can also Google it. Riku is also looking for mod mods on for his Twitch channel for his Twitch content. So if you want to do, file submit an application, go to Twitter. He has posted the applications there. Also, help once again help me with a subscriber goal, subscriber goal on YouTube and the follower goal on Twitch. So let's go to Misa's channel. Give her a hashtag Lisi Rocks Raid. Okay, shall we? So, hope you guys have a lovely day. Bye!